Welcome everyone, I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and now that all of the film has been watched and all of the grades are in, it's time for the Football Game Plan Scouting 2018 NFL Draft Prospect Preview. Before we get started with our prospect rankings, here's how we gather our grades and what they actually mean. First, we watch a minimum of three full games on a player, a prospect's best game, his worst game, and the best or intriguing matchup. And second, we grade on 15 key points specific to the position to equal 100 points in total. Now, here's what the grades that you'll see by a prospect's name will actually mean. Prospects that earned grades in the 90s graded out as future NFL All-Pros. Prospects in the 80s are considered future Pro Bowl players. Grades in the 70s represent solid NFL starters, and grades in the 60s are players that we believe are spot starters in the NFL. And if you notice, we don't use the word reserve or backups because we personally feel as though that there are no such thing as backups in the NFL, only starters in waiting. So without further ado, let's kick off our prospect rankings by taking a look at our top 10. So that, we have a three-way tie for the top graded flanker in this year's draft class. Antonio Callaway out of Florida missed all of the 2017 season due to an off-the-field issue, but when you evaluate his game strictly on the field, you see a phenomenal player. Callaway can essentially play all of the wide receiver spots. He's supremely athletic and has a knack for making a big play. I thought he was the most consistent of offensive playmakers for the Florida Gators. He has great hands and runs very good routes. Again, for him to fully maximize his potential as a pro, he has to get things in order off the field or he may be another story in a long line of prospects of unfulfilled potential. Calvin Ridley of Alabama has a silky smooth release off the line of scrimmage and great burst in his route running. He reminds me a lot of Marvin Jones and how he's able to quickly get a defensive back to open up his hips. I think he can get a bit stronger as at times he can get big boyed on some of those routes. Because of the Crimson Tide passing offense, we didn't really get to see him fully blossom, but I think that'll change as he enters the NFL. He's a definite playmaker on the outside. I'm a big fan of Cedric Wilson's game out of Boise State. I thought he was the West Coast version of Calvin Ridley. He does a great job in laying out for reception and also can make the difficult catch look easy. His best asset is his hands, and he's very strong at the catch point and has excellent hand-eye coordination. He's a savvy route runner that's able to get open versus man or find soft spots in the zone and settle down and make himself available for the quarterback. At number four is Dante Pettis of Washington. I felt as though every time I looked up, Pettis was bringing a punt back for a touchdown. This is the element of his game where he can make an immediate impact as a pro, as a rookie. He may be a little bit too deliberate for his own good as far as route running is concerned. He's a long strider that takes a few more steps to gear down and make a cut. However, once he gets the ball in his hands, he's very elusive and definitely knows what to do with it. I also like how much effort he puts into blocking on run plays. Rounding out my top five is Justin Watson of Penn. In my opinion, he's this year's version of Cooper Cup as the top FCS wide receiver that has a ton of position versatility. That's a big part of his game, in my opinion. He can function inside, outside, and situationally in the backfield. He's not overly elusive, but he does have a good burst and is strong enough to break tackles and take it a long way. At both the Shrine game and Senior Bowl, Watson was able to prove that, the, that his Ivy League production wasn't a fluke, and he's one of the more dependable targets in this wide receiver class. Nico Carter out of West Georgia does a great job in attacking the football. He's 6'4 and around 200 pounds, depending on which day. I think he plays above the rim like Dennis Rodman. Outside of his high-pointing capability, Carter is athletically gifted who can contort his body to adjust to poorly thrown passes. Coming from a Division II program, it was important to stand out during the All-Star circuit. He stood out all week long at the Tropical Bowl practices and also had a very good game as well. Where he has success is with his quickness and ability to high point versus a defensive back. Looking at the remainder of the top 10, and Taj Williams out of TCU, Teo Redding out of Bowling Green, and Alan Zay Staggers out of Southern Miss are very underrated wideouts. Darius Fountain out of Northern Iowa was a star all week long at the East West Shrine game, and all four of these guys should definitely test well during their pro days. Elijah Marks of Northern Arizona stepped up big this season as the Lumberjacks number one option in the passing game after Emmanuel Butler, who will be a pro prospect next year, went down with a season ending injury. Now what Marks brings to the table is athleticism and elusiveness. You can't quite figure out how he's getting behind the defense, 
but he's always behind the defense. He'll be a sleeper prospect to keep an eye on. As we look at rankings 11 through 19, you can see where Marks landed in this group. Keith Kirkwood of Temple, Byron Pringle of Kansas State, and Equinemius St. Brown of Notre Dame are your quintessential flanker receivers that have very good acceleration, can catch the ball in stride, and burst past the defender. I think a guy like DJ Chark out of LSU can be a solid player in the NFL once he finds his consistency, especially from a route running perspective. Keep an eye on Brandon Norwood of Florida A&M and Robert Foster of Alabama. Both guys have good all-around game that'll raise a lot of eyebrows in training camp. So that's a wrap for our 2018 FBGP Scouting Draft Prospect Preview. To see more of our individual scouting reports, follow us on Twitter at FBGP Scouting and bookmark the page footballgameplan.com slash FBGP Scouting. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash footballgameplan where you can get all of our scouting videos, mock drafts, and NFL Draft Prospect videos. And one more thing, subscribe to us on iTunes under Football Game Plan Podcast where you can find the Scout Team Podcast where we interview multiple NFL Draft prospects.